Ramos. Hey there, welcome to Say It Right, an emergency program that will help you cure your language ailments. Is your vocabulary malnourished? Do you want to decorate your English with some fancy new words? Then you're in the right place. I am Anne Marie, your language nurse, and I'm here to help you get your English back in shape. Let's take a look at what we will discuss today. How to grow different fruits in the desert and which fruit it is better to serve for dessert. Is it easy to play ball with somebody who tries to call the shots but doesn't know your ballpark figure? Why California girls made the word awesome a little less impressive. I'll explain all this to you in a few seconds. Okay? Are you just about ready? Your treatment session is starting now. Let's take a big dose of knowledge. Today, we're going to clear up a few tricky words that stand in your way to English excellence. The first pair of confusing words is fruit and fruits. These are sweet, juicy things we eat. But watch out, there is still a slight difference between them. The word fruit is used when we are speaking about this food in general, as in one of the food groups. We use it for the overall description of this product. For example, fruit is very good for your health and helps you study English. Now, fruits is used when we refer to different kinds of fruit. For example, we have a wide selection of fruits on the menu, such as grapes, apples, pears, and peaches. Got it? Okay, let's move on to the next pair. So, our next words are dessert and desert. One small letter sets these two apart, and yet their meanings are miles away from one another. Dessert is a yummy treat we eat after a meal. For instance, today we are having a delicious fruit sundae mm, for dessert. Got it? Okay, now desert, on the other hand, is a hot, dry place where usually very few living things can survive. Like here. It's so hot and dry here. I feel like I'm in a desert. How was that? Do you remember everything? Excellent. Let's move on to the next part and fill our bellies with some idiom vitamins. Are you feeling weak? Would a little sports training help your English? Well then, lucky you, because today all our idioms are about sports. Are you ready to play ball? I hope so, because our first idiom has already been used. To play ball means to cooperate with someone, as in, do you think the company is willing to play ball with us? Nowadays, it is so hard to find a reliable partner to do business with, but I'm sure you'll succeed. Before we begin working with that company, we should make sure we know who will call the shots. We don't want anyone to control our business except us. The phrase, to call the shots, means to be in control or make the decisions. For example, who is calling the shots here? We need to make a decision fast. Next, we need to know about how much this is going to cost us. What is our ballpark figure? A ballpark figure is the approximate financial estimate for something. As in, I don't know the exact cost, but a ballpark figure is about one million. Everything understood? Great. I know these idioms will help you and your English sound perfect. I don't know about you, but I'm hot, so let's hit the showers. It is time for meditation. Get ready. Sit back and relax. 
this story will amaze you. What is this word awesome that you always hear from the mouths of Americans? Ooh, I like that. It has a long history, so let's start from the beginning. The word awesome is an adjective, which originally had a literal meaning. <gasps> what a cute pair of shoes. <sighs> oh, sorry. The literal meaning, profound wonder. In the olden days, it was used to describe something that was truly amazing, such as the awesome power of, of nu nuclear energy, or the awesome view from, from, from the Grand Canyon? From the Grand Canyon. But in the 1980s, oh, I love it. The word was weakened by American usage. It started to mean simply something that was cool. Oh, so cool. Or exceptional. This word became especially popular in the state of California. Valley girls, or easy-minded and not-so-smart girls, made it fashionable. It was even used... Mm, that is good. It was even used as a catchphrase in a very popular teenage movie called Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Now the word is used to describe anything that is remotely interesting. We could hear expressions such as awesome song or that was an awesome party, etc. Everything understood? Ooh, I'm gonna get myself one of those. I hope that your English is now awesome after my language therapy. Yet another language session has come to an end, and I can say confidently that you are looking great. Let's do a quick checkup. Mm-hmm. I see that you know the difference between those tricky words such as fruit and fruits, as well as desert and dessert. Super. And, uh-huh, never forget how to call the shots, what a ballpark figure is, and how to play ball. Excellent. Now, you've got a new word, awesome, in your vocabulary from our meditation. That's really awesome. Keep up the good work, and you'll be an English star in no time. This was Anne Marie, your language nurse, and you watched Say It Right. May your English be clean and healthy. Let's move on to the next pair. Oops. Hmm, doesn't want to stand up. Yeah, the... Oh, 